the festival of Passover. and the celebration of Easter on one side and baptism on the other side have something in common. Do you know what that is? What is that? Death. Death. At one of the baptisms that happened in this world, a little three-year-old girl was sitting between her parents, watching as the pastor, the officiating minister, enter the baptistry, and then the first candidate joined him. She was looking carefully. It was the first time she would be seeing something like that. And the minister raised his hand, uttered the baptismal formula, from the Bible, and then he baptized that candidate. The little girl said, Daddy, why did he push him under the water? And mom was trying to quietly explain to her why that happened. She wasn't happy with the explanation. So as you can imagine, later on, that day, late afternoon, she brought it back as a question. And now both parents were trying to give the best answer. They spoke about sin. They spoke about the fact that when somebody wants to live like Jesus, they want to make a decision and they want to bring that in front of everybody so that everybody will know they now belong to Jesus Christ. And then the water represents Jesus Christ washing sins away. And when they come back out from the baptistry, they really want to do their best to do good. So the little one looked at them and said, huh, that's interesting. Why didn't the pastor just spank him then? <laughs> Good question. Well, that just won't do it. A good spanking just won't do it. Something else is needed there. And that is called death. Yes, death. Romans chapter 6, starting with verse 1. Explain how these two realities, the cross of Jesus... And baptism become overlapping realities. What shall we then say? The apostle asks. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And he answers, uh uh. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized, how many of you were baptized? As many of us that were baptized, 
into Christ Jesus were baptized into his what? Death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that all old man was crucified with him, that the blood of sin, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we should also live with Him. You didn't say anything after that. Let me read that again. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we may shall also, we shall also, what? Live with Him. Amen. Amen. That's the essence of this overlapping reality. The cross and baptism. Death and death. Jesus Christ dying for us. We Die in Jesus Christ. In his death. Buried in his death. And then resurrected. So that we may walk in newness of life. This is a special Sabbath. On many grounds. But in a special way. Because we can witness with our own eyes this overlapping reality of the cross and baptism. Two precious souls. One called Byron, no, Brian. And one called Alan. I'm trying to spot them. They should appear. Okay. Somebody let them know we are waiting for them. <laughs> because they would like to say a few words to you. It is amazing how God brings people to the cross. Because Jesus said, when I will be lifted up, I will draw. Everybody to me. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody will come to the cross. But what I strongly believe, that one way or another, in this life, everybody is being drawn by Jesus Christ. By the cross. By the supreme sacrifice. By the supreme manifestation of love. The way the Apostle Paul expresses it. While we were still sinners, God demonstrated His love to us. How? That while we were still sinners, what happened? Jesus, He died for us. So that we can die for sin in His death. And we have two stories. Brian's story. 
and Alan's story, coming from different paths of life, with different experiences, but people that can testify in front of everybody that the cross has been drawing them for quite some time now. Some people are drawn early on in their childhood and then they decide for some reasons to oppose. Some even try to run away and yet at one point they cannot get that voice, that drawing force out and they have to listen to it again. Some may be searching for God in different ways, on different paths, looking for Him here, looking for Him over there, trying to see Him in a certain way, maybe even misrepresented because one of the enemy's factories is a factory of icons. Not icons that you put on walls, but icons engraved in people's heart and mind. False pictures of God. You know, according to the Bible, we are not supposed to create a, a tangible picture of God. You wonder why? Because when somebody starts knowing God, that picture, that first picture, when God becomes visible to them somehow, that picture will take new and new nuances and contours and will become more and more beautiful. If somebody makes a drawing or a sculpture of his picture, it may be that that picture would change, but the drawing or the sculpture would not change. That's why the Almighty has decided not to be represented in a certain way. He works with people trying to form, to shape in their hearts and minds. The right picture, the ever-growing picture, the brighter and brighter representation of God's character. 